at 5. Um, the test will be tomorrow. It's going to be an open notes test. You can use any of the notes that you've been taking over the course of our distance learning. Um, if you go through this review with me using the video, you will be 100% ready for the test. So I suggest going through it with me and then you can even print out a blank copy to try for yourself. Um, that would be the best way to practice for this. Um, I did create the review today to mirror the test so that you'll be extra, extra prepared. So as long as you are able to do this review, I promise you'll be good on this test. You'll have all day until 8 p.m. And that's the only thing you have to work on. And I know most of you are saying you're getting your work done by like 12 o'clock. So um, take the math out of that equation. And if you do all your other work first and then you start your homework, I'm sorry, if you start this test afterwards, you have eight hours to get it done. So I wouldn't worry. I think you guys would be just fine. You can take a picture. You can scan it. Um, remember, if you keep it as a PDF, I will be able to edit it in the most beneficial way possible using Kami. I'm able to even give you guys um, voice comments on your PDF. I'm able to take a screen recording or a video recording to give you feedback on your test. So if you're able to scan or um, even it even works with pictures, but um, the best way is a PDF. So if you scan or if you um, edit your PDF, that's the best way to do it. Okay, so let's get started with our review. Number one, Jason has volunteered at the pet shelter three more times than Keith. So that means Jason, whatever Keith did, he did it three more times. So Keith plus three. Jason has volunteered 12 times. So now we know that Jason has volunteered 12 times. Which equation represents the situation? So now we know Jason has volunteered 12 times and that amount is however much Keith did plus three more. So if you just simply replace Keith with a variable and as you can see, they chose to use K, you can match up your equation with one here. So which one matches up and don't, don't and look very carefully because this first one has the same order, but it's different. This is saying 12 plus K equals three. Which one of these matches 12 is equal to K plus three? That would be choice C. K plus three is equal to 12 because they mean the same thing, right? So Jason has volunteered 12 times and we know that he's volunteered three more times than Keith. So that amount is three more than Keith. Choice C. My suggestion for those types is always to do it yourself first and then match it up because it can get confusing. Number two, which for which equation is x equals five a solution? Plug it in, plug it in. Right? We have to see which one it works with. So if you do five times five, does that give us five? Nope, it does not. I'll just show it on the side just to be thorough. But five times five does not equal five. It equals 25. So number, I'm sorry, not number A. Part A, or choice A, is not an option. For choice B, I have five plus X, so I'm replacing five with five. Five plus five equals 15? No, 10 does not equal 15, so it is not choice B. Uh, choice C, five plus zero equals X. Five plus zero equals, we're replacing X with five. Is this true? Five equals five. Ta-da! This is your solution. But just to show you that choice D does not work, X over five, we're doing five over five is equal to five. Five divided by five is one. One does not equal five. So that would be choice C. Okie dokie. Looks like I have my pages backwards. Oh no, I just skipped over. Okay, so these are numbered, but I forgot I didn't use all of the numbers in the review, so you can just pretend like I'm not numbering these. Um, but I am doing this number five. Marianne can say hello in more than seven languages. More than. That means greater than. Which number line could represent the situation? 
So I know because this is more than, I only want to see open circles. So you can automatically eliminate the two choices that have closed circles. Just as a quick review, closed circle means greater than or less than. Closed circle means greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Because remember, that is telling us visually that the number is included in the solution. So now all we have to figure out is which one represents more than seven, right? So which one is more than seven here? Remember, you can use the little trick where you draw the line and the greater than sign, it shows you which way it should be pointing. So that's choice A. This is showing us all the values that are less than seven. This is gonna be more than seven. And remember, just to clarify, the open circle is telling us it's not equal to seven. If it's more than seven, it can't be seven, okay? Number six, what are the coordinates of point A on the grid below? This is a nice little question. So to find the coordinates, right, we're looking at A. We follow it down to the X first. Remember, it's always X first, X comma Y. Make sure you practice this because a lot of you are still making those mistakes where you're putting a um, the Y value in front of the X. So your X is negative two. And your Y is, of course, I forgot to label, three. Don't yell at me, guys. Negative two comma three. And that's gonna be choice B. And again, I suggest with multiple choice questions that you always do the, the answer yourself first and then compare it to the options because especially with this, they all have the same numbers. There's negatives and positives and it, it might confuse you trying to you know, say which one is the right answer. My suggestion is write it out and then pick the one that's correct. It just, it's, you know, a little bit less room for making a mistake. All right, so let's move on. Sorry guys, so I started recording this question and I, um, there was a very loud noise, so I had to restart. <laughs> okay, so um, for number seven, Mike is renting a boat. The hourly rental fee is the same per hour for any boat. Mike paid $50 to rent a canoe and then $25 to rent a kayak, which is the dependent variable in this situation. So I wrote on the side before um, that the time is always your independent variable. So the number of hours that Mike boated, you can immediately, immediately eliminate that because that's time so that's your independent variable so what you have to think about is what is the other variable that's depending on the amount of time so the time that he's boating is determining how much he paid for these boats so which one of these represents how much he paid it's not the hourly rental fee because as they're telling us in the problem that's the same per hour so that doesn't depend on anything it's the same the number of boats has nothing to even do with this they don't tell us anything about how many boats he takes out. And this was hopefully a more obvious answer. The amount that he's going to pay for each of those boats depends on how many hours he has it out. Okay? Um, we're skipping over here to number 10. Tamara has a box of 12, 12 colored pencils. There are three red pencils and P other pencils. We're going to write an equation. This is super easy. So we have three red ones. And then we have another amount, P, and the total is 12. That's it. Or you could write P plus 3 equals 12. Either one of these is okay. Why is this okay? Because addition is commutative, right? Doesn't matter the order that we write addition in. That's that. I think I should even mention this because I can just see Augusto or Danny um, asking, would it be okay if I wrote something like this? 12 minus P equals 3. That's also okay. Or even 12 minus 3 equals P. Technically, those are all correct as well. This is probably what you're all going to go with, though. Number 11. Determine whether X equals 33 is a solution to the equation. So, you know you want to hear me sing it again. We're going to plug it in, plug it in. So we have three equals X over 11. We're going to plug in 33 wherever we see an X and test this out. So this is gonna be three equals 33 
over 11. And remember that these are not fractions. We don't want to think of them as fractions anymore because we're just super cool algebra kids. We just want to think of this as division. 33 divided by 11 is equal to 3. And since 3 is equal to 3, that means it is a solution. So we're going to write x equals 33 is a solution. Ta-da! And that's your justification right there. Okay? Moving right along. Oh, we already finished that page. Let me just put these pages underneath so that I have some. I'm writing on top of something that's making marks. So, <clears throat> number 14. The temperature in the freezer must be 2 degrees Fahrenheit or less. Write and graph an inequality to represent the situation. So, it can be 2 degrees, but it also could be less than 2 degrees. So, that means that 2 is included. So, it's got to be less than or equal to 2. So, temperature, maybe we'll use the variable T because they are asking us for an inequality. T has to be less than or equal to 2. Right? Think about it. It's got to be 2 degrees or less. So, that's why it's less than or equal to. So when I draw my inequality, I'm dealing with this less than or equal to symbol. So the first thing I need to know about that is that it's included, so it's going to be a closed circle. And if I look at the direction of my arrow, it's going to be pointing to the left. And also remember that when you draw that symbol, if it actually is the same way as an L, that means it's going to the left. So on the 2 or over the 2, technically it doesn't matter. I like to do mine just above it. I'm going to draw a closed circle and my arrow is pointing to the left and of course that's because that's where all of my less than two numbers are, right? All of these values going on forever after this point are less than two. And try to make your graphs a little bit neater than what I just did. I'm just trying to make it dark enough so everyone can see. Okay? Moving on. Number 15. We're going to graph and label these points on the coordinate plane. For this, I am going to switch to my pencil because it's important to graph correctly and we don't want to mess that up. Um, I'm going to just pause for a second so I can highlight my axes and I'll be right back. Okay, so I also, while I was highlighting, I also filled in those blanks that we have here. That's how you can tell this is from GoMath. One, three, in between those twos and fours, okay? So before I begin, I am also going to label my quadrants because I want to make sure you guys remember that. We're starting here and this is quadrant one and we go counterclockwise. This is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four because on your test, I did not, on this review, I don't think, yeah. On the review, I didn't ask you for the quadrants, but on the test, I did. So I'm gonna do that for you here. You're going to graph and label each point, and then what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you tell me which quadrant each of these are in. So I'm going to give you a spot to do that on the side here. Okay. All right, so point A is 2 comma 4. So I'm going over to the 2. Remember, X is first. So let me just to remind everyone. These are all your X values, and then followed by the Y. We always plot the x first, we go horizontally first and then vertically. So we go over to where x is 2 and up where x is 4. So we go up here. This is point A. So point A is in quadrant 1. Okay. Point B is negative 1, negative 3. And hopefully you remember what I've been telling you. If they're both negative, that'll automatically be quadrant 3. Negative 1 over to the negative one, down to negative three. That's gonna be point B, which is quadrant three, as predicted. Our next point's negative four comma five, so we're over to the negative four, that's our X. Over to negative four, up to five, which I did not label, but it's up here. And just to show you, you know, I thought to myself, label the five, and I forgot. Okay, so that's four comma five, so that's C. And that's in quadrant dos. And last but not least, 
zero comma negative three. So remember when you have zero, that means you just don't go either to the right or the left. You stay at where X is zero, which is here. So I go down to the negative three, right here. So can point, B D, point D be in any quadrant? Remember what I told you guys? If it's on an axis, it's not in any quadrant. Not in a quadrant. Okay, I'll just write it on the side in case maybe you didn't watch the video that day or maybe you forgot. If a point, I'm gonna abbreviate point, is on an axis, it is not considered to be in a quadrant. And I'm saying it's not considered to be in a quadrant, but it's, it's just straight up not in a quadrant because it's on the borderline of where the two quadrants are. So you can't decide which quadrant it's in. It's just on the y-axis, okay? Let's do number 17. The table shows how much Eric earns for pruning trees. We're going to write an equation that relates t, which is the number of trees, so that's like your x, to the to p, the amount that he earns, which is your y. And then we're gonna actually solve the equation to figure out how much Eric earns if he prunes seven trees. So remember, this is basically like x and y. We always wanna know how we can get y from x. So in this case, instead of x, we're using t, and instead of y, we're using p. So we want to know how to get p from t. Okay, so it's nothing different, just replacing x and, and y with different letters. So how would I get from 2 to 30? How would I get from 4 to 60? And 6 to 90? And 8 to 120? Look at the smaller ones that you can deal with. To get from 2 to 30, we're multiplying by 15. Same thing goes for four times 15, and if you're unsure about that, just test it out on the side and make sure, okay? So to get P from T, we're multiplying T by 15. So my equation is gonna be P equals, remember we will be doing this with Y equals, instead of P, is equal to 15 times T, or 15 T. That's your equation, ta-da! Now we just have to figure out how much is he gonna earn if he does seven trees. So we're going to, I'm gonna take this off to the side here. How much is he gonna get if he earns seven trees? I'm just, prunes seven trees, excuse me. I'm gonna replace the T with seven to figure this out. Okay, so that's gonna give me, when you do it, um, because we're not supposed to use calculators, if you do it off to the side, it's gonna give you 105. This is seven times five, which is 35. Carry you three, and then seven plus three is 10, 105. P would be 105. Not bad, okay? If you have a really hard time dealing with these other variables instead of X and Y, from what I've seen on your homeworks, you guys did a really good job of writing your equations. So if it helps you write the equation using X and Y first, and then when you're all done, you can just replace the Y with P and the X with the T if that helps, okay? Only one more. I added this one in because we spent a whole chunk of time graphing an equation by making a table. So I want you guys to show me how you can do that on the test. So I have an equation that I want you to graph. And in order to do that, we're going to make our XY table. So that's going to look like this. You have a spot for your X. You want to make a spot for what you're plugging in. We're gonna choose a few x values to plug in here. So here I'm gonna have my x minus one, which is gonna give me the y value. And then I'm going to write that as a point. Okay, and then you're gonna pick some values. So first we're gonna label our graph. Let me go to pencil again before I make a mistake. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And let's go up the same way. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. I'm glad I didn't mix Italian and Spanish there. Sometimes I mix them up. Um, 
I noticed that this is not labeled, so I'm going to go ahead and label my Y and my X axis just to help me. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick some values for X. Before we start, I want to just point out, if I decide to go with what, zero to start with X, I'm going to end up with something I don't know how to do yet. Some of you maybe can do negatives and whatnot, but you don't want to start with zero here because zero minus one is going to give me negative one, which is not even on this graph. So we're going to start with one, or you can even start higher up if you want. <clears throat> so I'm going to choose to begin with one, and you can make your table go as far as you want. We have 10 here, so it's really up to you. Or you could skip around. You could do one, three, five, seven, which I think I'm going to do. I'm going to do some odds. So I think I'm going to do one, three, five, seven, and nine. Okay? And if you want to do the evens, knock yourself out. If you want to do all 10, you can totally do that. Okay? It's just, you know, more work. So now these are my X values, and I'm going to plug them in and get my corresponding Y values. So when I plug in 1, I get 0, because 1 minus 1 is 0. So my point is x, which is 1, comma, 0, which is my corresponding y. That's my first point. Now I'm going to plug in 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. So my coordinate is going to be 3, comma, 2. Next, 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. So I get x, which is 5, comma, 4, which is my y. 7 minus 1 is 6, so this point is 7, 6. Okay, and then finally 9 minus 1 is 8, so my point is 9, 8. And notice, just like the equation is telling us, our x is 1 more than the y. Okay, so now we're just going to plot all those points and then connect them to make our graph. So 1, 0 is my first point, so that's going to be here. And as you can see, if we had included 0, that would be down here with negative 1, so we can't do that. <clears throat> 3, 2, over to the 3, up to the 2. 5, 4, over to 5, up to 4. If you choose to do the evens, they're just going to be halfway in between here. 7 and 6, over to 7, up to 6. And then over to 9, up to 8 for my final point. Okay, we're going to connect this line. And the most important thing, I need you guys to remember to add arrows, please. And I did want you guys to try to get in the habit of doing this because you're going to have to do it in algebra. I'm going to label my graph by writing its equation. And that is how we graph an equation. All right, guys. If you have any questions, let me know on Google Classroom. I want to make sure everyone really understands that I am working nonstop over here for you guys. So I am available. If I, if you guys comment directly on the stream on Google Classroom, it won't, it will not notify me. However, if you comment on something, an assignment of any kind, whether it's the post that I posted for the day, the agenda, or if it's a homework assignment or a an, an opening task, regardless. As long as it's just not on the stream, I will get that notification. I am here for you guys all day. It's supposed to only be till 3, but you guys know I answer questions later than that. So if you have something you need to clear up before the test, please just ask, and I will do my best to ha um, answer the question for you, okay? Um, have fun. I think you guys will do great on this.